just like before, you can control it with, you know, with your arrow keys. And look, I just need to run away from the snake. Hey everyone, uh, sorry it's been a while since my last video, but I'm back with a new video. And just a quick disclaimer, I'm making this video in collaboration with Replit. So last week, uh, I was playing around with their website Replit, and I found this uh, snake game someone made on that site. Uh, this person's name is Lorenzo Campos, I guess. And when you play this game, uh, it looks just like a standard game, standard snake game. Uh, but what's cool about it is that, first of all, it's written in pure Python. And this graphics that you see is actually just the terminal. Uh, so if you look into the code, you know, you can see that uh, this person defined some uh, constants here for the graphics. And then there's this uh, function uh, that they wrote. And this is the function for displaying the graphics. And this is basically just a bunch of print statements. You know, uh, in this person's code, the world uh, of the game is represented in this variable. And then uh, this person is saying, just print everything from the world. And surprisingly, the graphics looks pretty good and it's pretty smooth. Uh, so I decided to, you know, sort of take inspiration from this project and make my own snake game. So let me show you what it's like. Here is the game. Uh, you know, this is my code. Uh, I'm just gonna run my game and show you what it's like. So as you can see, it's pretty similar graphics wise uh, to the game I, I just showed you. I guess that's partly because, you know, I took some inspiration from, from that code and partly because it seems pretty natural to use, you know, these particular emojis like green blocks for the, for the snake and the apple for the food and uh, white blocks for the borders. That seems pretty reasonable. But for the code itself, uh, I wrote it from scratch and there are a couple of, you know, big differences uh, from this code to, you know, the previous code I showed you. One is that uh, you might have noticed whenever you eat the apple, you know, you get a little bit faster. And I just figured it's more interesting that way. Uh, but the big implementation difference is the fact that I use this uh, blessed library. It's a Python library for dealing with, you know, graphics in a terminal. And uh, it's pretty good. So it's uh, kind of similar to this other one called Curses. It's a built-in module in Python. And I was actually trying to, you know, make a snake game with curses, uh, but it didn't work that well with Unicode. And that's why I decided to, you know, go with Blessed. It's pretty similar, but it works much better for Unicode. And uh, I like it. Uh, let me just show you um, how I use this library. And then I'm gonna show you the next game I made after this one. So to use this library, Blessed, you know, you just need to um, uh, do some setup here. You can, you know, browse my code uh, later. I think I'm going to put a link to that in the description. Uh, but after some setup code, you just need to say uh, this thing and then make a new block of code. This says, uh, take, start taking input from the keyboard and then hide uh, the cursor. I think it makes sense. And then uh, we need to set up a while loop. So this is going to be our you know, main uh, while loop for the game. This just says uh, while the input is uh, not Q, keep doing the following. And the following is uh, take the input from the key, uh, the keyboard, and put it in this variable called the val, and then do stuff with it. And that way, you know, the game runs pretty smoothly, I would say. Uh, but the thing is, I, I was, you know, playing uh, this game on my own for a while, and I started to think, this is kind of boring. I guess it's just because it's kind of, you know, predictable. And it's just like, you know what to expect when you're playing this game. So I thought, maybe I can make it a little bit different. And I thought, what if you control the food instead of the snake? So that's what I did. 
Okay, so with that idea, here's what I made. I'm just gonna go to my code and start it. Uh, just like before, you can control it with, you know, with your arrow keys. And look, I just need to run away from the snake. And as you can see, uh, the snake, you know, grows without eating anything. And someone was asking me why, and I think it's because the snake is eating air. That's why it's growing. Uh, anyway, it's uh, it's pretty fun. I'm gonna put a you know link to this game in the description just in case you want to play or you know check out the code. And when you get eaten, you're done. Uh, you die and you lose. But it's actually possible to you know beat this game by letting the snake sort of uh, corner itself. Uh, and like I said, it's pretty fun, and I've gotten a lot of funny comments too, like, uh, why is this so fast, ah, uh, and uh, the snake's so much faster than me. <laughs> I love how people are enjoying this game. The intensity is real. I am god in this game. Yes, you are, legendary. Legendary wolf, you are a god in this game. Yep, and I got this other comment I wanted to show you. Uh, this person's like, so basically this is a magical snake that keeps growing if it eats nothing and squishing itself to death. And the only way to stop it from doing that is to eat the magical apple that can run away. Uh, it's pretty funny. I, I love how people enjoy this game. But, you know, I, I kind of figured this game was pretty fun to make and also to play. Uh, so I wanted to show you guys a little bit of, you know, what, what went behind, behind like how I made this game. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to show you is how I represented uh, this state. You know, the whole state of the game. Like where the snake is and, and where the apple is. Uh, I called uh, that variable world. Uh, let me find it here. Yeah, this one right here. And it's basically a two-dimensional list or a two-dimensional array. And to show you guys what it's like, I'm just going to comment out this whole block of code. And then I'm going to print world here after initializing uh, this world. So let me run this code. And this is what you have. So basically, each row represents you know, each row in the game. It's kind of like uh, a bunch of pixels. So the first row is just bunch of blocks, just the borders, and the second row is this one, and so on. And uh, this one is a little bit hard to see, but you can see, you know, where the apple is, and where the snake uh, is, and uh, where the empty spaces are. And then to print this properly, all I needed to do was uh, just this thing. For row in world, print this. So let me show you what that looks like. Uh, so here I'm just saying join you know, all the characters or all the strings in row with a space in between them. And the reason I need that is because without a space, it looks more squashed. And I think it looks much better with a space. OK, so let me now quickly explain uh, how I represented the snake how I represented the apple's position. And you know, I'm going to ex quickly explain the whole structure of the code. And then I'm going to explain how I made the AI for controlling the snake. So to represent uh, the position of the snake, you, know, you need multiple lists. Each list, or each array, represents you know, the position of the particular block of the body. So 6, 5. Uh, this one represents the position of the head right here. I think it's uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, row 6 of column uh, 5. And same thing with this one. 6, 4 would be right here at this block. And 6, 3 would be this block right here. And you know, I could have uh, simply used a list of lists or like two-dimensional array. And I think it would have been efficient enough. But
But to make it extra efficient, I used a deck here. You know, I talked about this data structure before, uh, but this data structure is basically good for putting things, you know, from the left hand side or the right hand side, or you know, taking things out from either side. And that makes sense for this particular application, because what we need to do if we need to, if we want to move the snake to let's say over here, is we need to say, okay, you know, where is this position? and then move the head over there. So in that you know, particular example, that would be uh, six, six, I think. So basically we need to put a new position from the left-hand side and take out uh, the last position from the right-hand side. So that's why I figured uh, a deck is a good data structure for this. And then uh, for food, it's much simpler because you know, the food doesn't grow in this game. We only have one single position for the food. So we just have uh, two numbers. This is the number, this is the row number, and this one represents uh, where the column is. And one challenge uh, I had while making this game is that uh, I need to make the snake slower than the apple uh, because if the snake was moving at the same velocity as the apple, you know, you would get caught pretty easily. And so let me show you how I did that. Uh, basically, this is, you know, a turn-based game. Uh, you know, the whole structure of the code is pretty similar to what I had for the regular uh, snake game. You know, basically I'm using the blessed uh, library. And then I'm saying, this thing uh, that I explained earlier. And then I have this while loop as the main loop for the game. And then I'm saying, you know, take, take an input uh, from the keyboard, put it in uh, this variable called val, and then do stuff with it. And here, uh, basically what I'm saying is each turn uh, comes at a frequency that's determined by the speed or by the timeout. And so each turn comes at, let's say, 200 milliseconds. And what I decided to do is, uh, you know, I'm gonna let the snake move only one out of two turns, or three out of five turns. And, you know, for details, you can just look at the code, uh, but I made uh, these config variables, n1 and n2. And this basically says the snake will only I move n1 out of n2 turns. And that way, you know, the snake is gonna be much slower than the apple. Okay, and the last thing I wanna explain before I wrap up this video is how I made the AI for moving the snake. So before I explain, let me show you. You can see that it's actually following me pretty well. And you know, if you play enough, you'll see that it, it starts doing some stupid stuff, uh, but it's good enough. So let me show you how I made it. So the key part is uh, right here. You know, first uh, I set preferred move to none, and then depending on some conditions, I'm gonna put it to you know one of up, down, right, or left. So the first thing I'm asking uh, here is, is the absolute value of y diff, which is you know food zero minus head zero. So that would be uh, the y, uh, the difference in the row numbers, I guess. And I'm doing the same thing with x diff. So I'm I'm comparing, you know, the the column uh, the food belongs to uh, to the column the head uh, of the snake belongs to. So that would be x diff. And I'm saying here, uh, if the absolute value of y diff is greater than the absolute value of x diff, uh, you know, we should make uh, the snake move up or down. And uh, we should make the snake move up if the y diff is less than or uh, equal to zero, and then down if it's the opposite. And if this condition is not true, then you know, do the same thing with x diff. If uh, that's greater than or equal to zero, the snake should move to the right. 
and otherwise the snake should move to the left. So that's how I determine the preferred move. And after I have the uh, single preferred move, I just combine it with all of the directions. And you know the directions, if you see, it's just left up, right down. Um, basically, you know what I'm going to do after that is I'm going to call call that preferred moves, and then, you know, just uh, just check for each move in preferred move if the snake is able to make that move. And you know it's kind of stupid here because it, the directions. Uh, the order of these directions is always going to be the same and we even have like a duplicate move if this is right where you know we have right twice in preferred moves so it's not the smartest algorithm but it's actually good enough you know uh, as you saw so basically here I'm, I'm saying for each moving preferred moves uh, check if the snake is able to make that move uh, you know, it's, it's able to make the move if uh, the destination is either food or an empty space. And uh, if not, check the next move. And then here what I'm saying is uh, if the next move that we want to make is still none after running the for loop, that will mean that there's no legal next move that the snake is able to make. So then we break out of uh, the for loop and then we just say what you want how did you do it <laughs> and you know the reason I, I'm saying how did you do it here is because when I was playing it by myself it was like really hard uh, to beat it actually at least at the beginning uh, I guess that's that's partly because the snake used to be a little bit faster than it is now in in the current code uh, but partly also because it's it's just it seems like a hard game and there, there's some luck involved. Uh, but you know, I think if you keep playing it, you'll eventually uh, be able to beat it. Okay, so that's how I uh, made the game. Uh, but before I go, I wanted to talk about a few things uh, that I learned and sort of relearned throughout uh, this whole experience of building this simple game. Uh, first of all, if you make a game and if you find it boring, then think about it. How can you make it more interesting? Flip the idea maybe. If you're the snake, maybe you can be the food instead. Uh, the second thing I learned is I think that even when the enemy AI is really simple, it can you know make the game pretty interesting. So when I think about games like you know Super Mario Brothers or Super Mario World, uh, those enemies might be pretty simple. Like they might be kind of you know, walking back and forth or just following you. But combine, combining that with, the, you know, with an interesting environment, I think you can make a compelling and uh, entertaining experience. And the third thing is, um, you know, it's, it's just the fact that programming is fun. I, just making this game kind of reminded me of how I started programming, you know, just by making random things. I don't remember if I made a game, but it was just like, you know, random, you know, Ruby and Python programming, and it's nice to be able to do that again, especially when you share it and you know get some feedback. Anyway, uh, I'm not sure if I said it before, but if you wanna you know, look into the code, uh, I recommend either forking this project on this website, Replit, or you know just you know checking out my code and copy. You can copy uh, to your local environment and then play around with it. Um, all right, so that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. Uh, sorry again for, for the long gap. I'm going to try to you know, make more videos in the future. I feel like I keep saying the same thing, but you know, I really mean it. And uh, thank you for waiting, uh, if you were waiting for this video. And thank you for watching this video. See you guys.